Uh, my name is Richard Rigby. I'm executive director of the ANU China Institute. Former diplomat, spent a good deal of my life working in or on China. And today we're extremely fortunate uh, to have with us Tansri Andrew, Andrew Sheng, uh, who is a, a very well known commentator and more than a commentator on, on matters Asian and on China in particular. Uh, both, both as an academic but also as somebody who's involved in the actual processes of uh, reform uh, and talking about reform in China. So Andrew, first of all, uh, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to us. It's been wonderful to have you here at the ANU for the second Crawford Australia Leadership Forum. Uh, you've spoken both in a general session but also in the session we had this morning on China's domestic challenges. And obviously it's about China that I, I'd like to, to speak. Now, some of the speakers talked about Chinese leadership and other problems, but you spoke in a particularly interesting way on just what you see is happening in China now, the transformational nature of, of the developments that we're witnessing. And I, I wonder if for the benefit of our viewers, you might be able to uh, talk a little about this for me. Well, first of all, I think uh, one needs to have a long lens of history to understand China. This is the first point. Uh, chi the uh, Chinese bureaucracy is the oldest surviving human institution around. Uh, it survived all the emperors, all the changes of regime, uh, foreign invasion, internal decay, uh, etc. And so when you're dealing with the uh, China, you must remember that you're dealing with a very old uh, and adaptable institution. That's point number one. The second point is that uh, China uh, uh, complies with the law of large numbers. Uh, it's one-fifth of mankind. And so uh, by the law of large numbers, one-fifth of the world's problems exist in China. And that's the point that I was trying to make. And it's not just that it's one-fifth of China's uh, uh, internal problems, but China's success or failure would affect the rest of the world, and the world's success or failure would affect China. It's just both are too big, and we're all, the, all living on one planet Earth. Uh, the, the, the third point that I would uh, you know, like to make uh, is that because the whole world is going through very major transformative, transformative uh, shifts, demography, uh, uh, climate change, uh, technology, uh, geopolitics, the revival of Cold War, etc., uh, and governance. Uh, you know, China is evolving at with this uh, at a speed and scale that has never as unprecedented in history. Right, for China to move from a uh, hundred over place uh, in GDP numbers to number two economy in the world uh, in 30, 35, 36 years is unheard of. I mean, we, we, even when you know um, uh, long term history. So uh, uh, this is the biggest transformation uh, that we've seen. And uh, what has happened is that its success can only be explained because the Chinese governance model, whether you like it or not, uh, has been an institutional uh, uh, development, uh, innovation, over the old bureaucracy, ability to control the bureaucracy and to be able to have uh, policy objectives and policy outcomes. Right? You know, it started with the full modernization in 1979, and it's implemented quite a lot of it, except that the game has changed and the context has changed. And I think that's the process that we need to uh, appreciate, that at the present moment, the Chinese economy, you know, in 30 years, became the world's uh, greatest factory. It's the, 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 the hub of the uh, uh, global supply chain, right? Uh, it's not very high value production, but it is still a major production. Anything you can think of these days is, uh, you know, carries that um, you know, made in China. But China is now moving from that old investment-based, uh, export-led model towards a knowledge-based, uh, innovation-driven and consumption-driven model. Uh, the best illustration of this is that four out of the top global 15 internet platforms are Chinese. Uh, and uh, you know, the, 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 there are some names uh, that have become well known like Alibaba, uh, but Tencent, uh, Baidu, uh, JD.com transact more electronic uh, e-tailing business than the United States because their uh, user base uh, is somewhere between 400 to 600 million uh, population, larger than the US uh, population. 
So these transformations are changing China, changing the mode of governance. The very fact that the, uh, uh, the CCP is, allows these entrepreneurs now to, to have creative destruction. Uh, you must understand this. Uh, these businesses have creative destructions on state-owned enterprises. <laughs> you know, so so the, the, the whole game is, uh, is remarkable. And it's a remarkable march to markets, uh, in spite of the fact that people accuse you know, the leadership of autocracy, etc. But it, it is a massive commitment towards uh, a market economy, massive commitment to entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, and openness to the world. Now, you know, whether you agree with that is another matter, but that's essentially what the policy objectives are, and we're now looking at the outcomes. Mm. I think analytically, you know, you put your finger, one of, one of the things that makes it difficult uh, to approach. On the one hand, you say quite rightly that the Chinese bureaucracy is the oldest bureaucracy in the world, so these vast elements of continuity in, in, in China. But at the same time, what is actually happening, what is being undertaken by this very Chinese bureaucracy is absolutely revolutionary, it's something we've never seen in the world before. So it, it, that does make it a bit of a challenge. Now, you are somebody, I know, I know that your, your own background and training is entirely, is entirely Western oriented, but at the, at the same time, uh, you, you can draw on uh, Asian tradition as well as, plus your own contemporary in, involvement in China, and you master Chinese language. Um, from that point of view, what do you think are some of the more obvious mistakes that Western observers of China tend to make? Uh, Westerners uh, tend to look at China from a very theoretical point of view. They love a theory, they love a hypothesis, and they love to put you know, China into a box of, uh, you know, that, oh, this fits, this doesn't fit, you know, oh, this is black, this is white. The Chinese system is actually a very complex organic system. You know, uh, governance works on network, networks of networks. There's, the, there's a civil bureaucracy, there's a military bureaucracy, uh, uh, there is a civil society that's transforming very fast, as I mentioned. Uh, you know, religion, uh, Buddhism, uh, even Christianity is gathering as much membership, uh, 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 you know, in China as in anywhere else. So all these things are simultaneously changing China, right? And the very fact that, you know, on WeChat, one could uh, have uh, wonderful discussions, uh, mostly in Chinese, unfortunately, uh, uh, on policy issues. Uh, belies the, the traditional way that there is you know, lack of uh, freedom of speech or, 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 or a, a discussion in China. The intellectual tradition is very much alive in China and a lot of the policy debates that you have in, 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 in the West uh, on climate change, you know, on pollution, on uh, social in, 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 in inequity, uh, all these are, are being debated very rigorously and very uh, somewhat heatedly. And, and sometimes, uh, 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 you know, the authorities clamp down on this to, to, so that it doesn't get out of hand, put it this way. Uh, but, 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 that's, but, but it is moving forward. And clearly in the last year or so, it, 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 it is true, I think we have to acknowledge, in, the, in, in some areas there has been a, a degree of clamping down. Uh, on other areas, so as, as you say, the debate continues apace. And I'm always struck by the fact that sometimes within the system, uh, that you see the most vigorous debate rather than from people outside the system. For instance, in our own ANU contacts with the, with, with, the, with the Chinese system, we look at within the central party schools, some of their debates about democratization, the future role of the party, uh, center province relations. These are all very, very vibrant. Or in China international relations, the contemporary, uh, China Institutes of Contemporary International Relations, KICA, which belongs to the Ministry of State Security, but within which nevertheless you have very, very vibrant uh, debates and quite, quite meaty you know, arguments about uh, the appropriate role yes. that China should be playing globally. Um, I know we don't have a great deal of time, but I uh, ask you to put yourself in the position of Xi Jinping. <laughs> if you were Xi Jinping, what would be worrying you most? What are the issues that you would be grappling with most of all, do you think? No, I think, I think the, 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 you know, first of all, I'm, I, I, I can't be and never will be, uh, but I think that's one of the toughest jobs in the world. But I think what, what he's, he's grappling with is that uh, uh, he genuinely believes that there is a China dream. He genuinely believes that Chinese society can be transformed towards that. And that China dream is, is not 
that far different from an American dream or an Australian dream or a Malaysian dream. You know, it is about uh, middle class income, everybody having their jobs, uh, living in a, in a world of uh, peace and security, uh, don't have to deal with, uh, you know, terrorism, uh, uh, petty crime, corruption and all these sort of issues. And I think, I think on, that, on that area, other than, you know, the, uh, the absolute uh, uh, freedoms of individuals, etc., uh, which the Chinese feel is relative, uh, I, I think uh, within uh, his lifetime and probably my lifetime, uh, some progress will be made. Now, uh, how much of that progress, that's a very difficult question. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's a very interesting point. And obviously, precisely what is involved in the Chinese dream is of increasing importance to all of us, whether we exactly have the same dream or not, the old Chinese expression, Tong Zhuang Yi Mong, same bed, different dreams, uh, is all very well. But at the same time, China is increasingly are talking about peripheral diplomacy, and I think Australia is definitely on the periphery, uh, talking about a community of common destiny. Even without the formulation community of common destiny, it seems to me that China is now so much part of our future, our futures, our regional futures, uh, that uh, whether we want it or not, we are going to have at least to some degree a common destiny. Well, we, we are having uh, common destinies. Look at the children of uh, the top leadership. A lot of them are in ANU or in uh, Harvard, in Stanford, etc. So the young generation thinks very much like the millennials uh, 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 of uh, other nationalities, except that they have Chinese characteristics. And, and so if one if re recognizes that, increasingly the framework of thinking, what people care about, social justice, uh, climate change, uh, uh, jobs, you know, uh, technology, having a cool life, you know, these will be the shared values that we can build the common uh, community, put it this way. Well, Andrew, there's so much to talk about, but uh, I realize you're, you're very busy and I really appreciate the time that you've given us for sharing uh, your thoughts and I hope in the future we might have an opportunity to revisit some of these issues. I, I think it's a great honor and a learning experience for me to be at ANU. Thank you very much for the Thank opportunity. You.